Welcome to the Shooting the Cue podcast, presented by Heat Riles Barbecue, with tips, tricks, and an inside look with some of the top pitmasters in the game. Now here's your host, Heath Riles. Welcome back to Shooting the Cue, everybody. Today I'm joined, of course, by my lovely wife, Candace. How you doing today, baby? I'm good. Just good? Tired. Still wore out <laughs> yeah. from our travel adventures? Yep, I am. Yeah, it's been kind of rough getting back into the groove after being gone like we were gone and back in the rhythm of shooting videos and podcasting and, you know, a little bit of everything else, right? Life's unexpected events. Life's yeah. unexpected events. You know, talking about events, what about the big news we got this week? Memphis in May. Memphis in May. Unfortunately for the people that have not seen or was not one of the cooks of Memphis in May, we received an email the Memphis River Parks Commission has just, I don't know any better way to say it. They're trying to put the screws to Memphis in May. I mean, that what they're wanting to charge to fix the grounds down there is astronomical, in my opinion, uh, considering I have friends in the dirt work business and sod business and everything else. The numbers just don't add up, in my opinion. But, hey, I'm only, you know, one person. I don't run that show, so... I'm going to let them deal with that. But the unfortunate of the matter is we may not have Memphis in May on the river again. I mean, I feel like, honestly, I'm not surprised. I wish that I were, but I kind of feel like we had talked about this, just us, not with anybody else. But it was almost like they allowed it to go on. And when I say they, I don't mean Memphis in May. I I guess I just mean the city of Memphis in general allowed it to happen and just to to prove it couldn't continue to happen there basically is is my personal opinion no one else's that's just what i think well you know we both seen even getting equipment in there this year they narrowed the sidewalks by three or four foot from what it was previously well not Uh, only that but i mean if for those of you that weren't there they they had fences everywhere like they had ground you couldn't walk on things you had to walk around and it's not like fences that you could just hop over like they were there and they were still there when the event was over nobody tore them down nobody got over them nobody ran over them so I mean a lot of the ground that I feel like they were trying to protect was protected i'm not saying that there weren't damages i'm sure but i mean that's every year at memphis in may it's just when you bring big trailers in and it's not just barbecue i mean music fest they're bringing in lots of equipment stages yeah i mean all of those heavy things too so you can't just blame it all on barbecue i feel like but well barbecue always takes the full blame (laughs) down there unfortunately and pays the cost for everybody yeah. else to have a good time, you know, with security deposits and stuff like that because they don't get security deposits during Music Fest, I don't think. Kind of hard to charge an artist that's just hopping on the stage. Um, you know, but, I mean, it is what it is, and I hope that it wasn't the last year on the river, but, yeah. you know, I'm one of these people that I do like my trailers clean and all that and all the mud and mess, and I feel like there's – our equipment's still not as clean as it was when it left going down there, some of it still. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to hurt my feelings that bad not to be on the river, but it's just a, of being on the river that makes Memphis in May. Have you read, and I don't, I, I take this as, in my mind, not barbecue people. Um, just read it, like going to our local news station, Facebook, like Channel 5, Channel 3. They've posted articles, just news articles, and like, people that live here commenting on it and I in my mind those people are not barbecue people I truly don't know if they are or aren't but have you taken the time to read any of the stuff that those some of those people have said about this it's kind of comical in a way and then it's it's just lots of different opinions I mean so many people have so many various opinions and types on how the park should be used down there what it should be used for and you know, this tradition has been carrying on since I was born, 1978, down at Memphis. And it got moved down on the river, what, in the early 80s after it moved right off of Bill Street. And so it's a, a iconic event, and I've seen a lot of people write about the changes of what's going to happen if it permanently moves. And I agree with some of those people, and then it's kind of like the American Royal. It's moved homes three or four times. It's still the American Royal. Still five or 600 teams show up for it. Yeah, they've had yeah. a down year during COVID. 
I mean, but you can't base everything just on an event location. I mean, an event's got to figure out how to overcome that at another venue. Yeah. And if it's planned right and executed right, and um, I think that Memphis and May can definitely do it, and maybe this is their stepping stone to step out of the spotlight off the river and maybe really up par this event in something huge. Um, you know, who knows? But it is what it is. You know, that's just Memphis and May for you, right? I know. We could talk about it all day. but All day. Well, you know, the next thing um, is talking about um, really just football <laughs> coming back in September. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, just football coming back. You know, we're only a few weeks away uh, from football season kicking it off. College football. College football. Is there – I don't really count NFL. Let's back up. We all know that. I, mean, I watch a little NFL ball, but I'm a college ball person. Yeah. When it starts, you know what I'm ready to do. Back patio, cook something on Saturdays, and watch some football. And, you know, that's going to lead me into we're working on the, the farm right now. We're building our own big barbecue shack, if you want to call it, our, our own smokehouse that we kind of – have been designing and drawing on for the last couple of years and waiting for our builder to get started, and now it's coming to light. Uh, the roof's going to go on, the windows are going in, and uh, we're really looking forward to starting doing some content down there with some different individuals, having some guests in. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a fun time down there when we get it finished by next year. It will be very fun. You think it'll be finished by next year? Everything? Yeah. You keep adding more, like, oh, we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this. Well, I mean, i I got to have goals to work toward, right? <laughs> That's what everybody says. I mean, I'm just waiting on my pool at my house, my, my current house. Pool. Pool. Well, you know, I'm going to end that topic, and today <laughs> we got a special guest coming in, Jake Fullington, guys. Let's welcome Jake to the show. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're joined with our good friend, Jake Fullington. How you doing, Jake? I'm doing well. You know, happy to be out here. Happy to come down and see everybody. You know, we ain't seen each other since Memphis in May, so it's really good to see you again and, and get to hang out. Man, at, at Memphis in May, something else. We were just talking about that, actually. Oh, yeah. It's it's definitely it's one of the biggest around here. It's definitely an experience. I always tell all my friends, if you've never been, at least go check it out. So, have you heard the news? What's going on with it? Uh, I have not, actually. So, we got a letter, an email earlier this week. Was it Monday? That basically the sure. Memphis River Park Commission, you know, we all have to put deposits up and all that. And, you know, they fix back the sod and all that, which is usually not a problem. It's usually a couple hundred thousand dollars. Well, now that expense has turned into about ten of a million, one point four. And so, basically, they don't know if the event's going to be held on the river ever again. That might have been the last one last year. Wow. And that's, with the way things are going, it doesn't surprise me. But that's a big tradition there that that I can kind of see. It, it's going to be tough to let go, especially for everybody who's been out there for years. That's what we were saying. It's, it's, it's iconic, and I think that the organizers are going to have to really, when they move event venues – they're going to have to kind of up the ante a little bit to do something different because they lost that river, you know, feel. That's what um, gave. That's what made it. I feel what it, it is. Was. I like my equipment not being dirty in the mud, you know, and all that, and having to clean all that up. But it is nice to be on the river. The hill walk sucks. We all hate the oh, hill. Oh yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's hard to beat hitting a golf ball into the river and that wind coming across there in early morning. That light on that bridge and. Uh, absolutely. Now, was that your first time to come this past year or this year? Uh, it actually was. I've I'd never been out there. I, of course, watched YouTube videos and stuff and kept up with it. But I've always stayed so busy with, with work and everything else that it's always been hard for me to get out and go to any kind of competitions right. or anything like that just because between work and working overtime and uh, I was just never able to. But now I'm at a point to where I, I can and I'm happy to be able to do it a little more. Nothing wrong with that. So for everybody that don't know you, Jake, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do for a living and kind of how you got started in this crazy barbecue journey of yours. So yeah, I grew up in a small town in Tennessee. Um, I came up, you know, good family, and clearly I like to eat, you know. 
Don't like, we all? Like and eat comes along with liking to cook, and that's what got me started. I started cooking at a young age. I probably first grilled anything around eight years old. And then it turned into smoking from there, and people ask me all the time, well, how did you learn how to cook? It was a lot of trial and error. I remember you know, I'd be 10, 11 years old. I'd grill dinner, and we'd all sit there and eat. It was so salty you couldn't stand it, but everybody ate it anyway, you know. <laughs> And uh, just over time, I've learned I've learned how to blend my seasonings, what I like, what others might like, and uh, it just it was just all a learning process. But as far as what I do for a living, I'm a paramedic. I've been doing that for going on six years now. Spent the last almost four as, as a paramedic. Works as advanced EMT also. I work in nine one one service. Work a lot of a lot of overtime, a lot of extra shifts, and and just put in the time and the effort to try to help people when I can. And even when I'm not at work, it's, that's one of the big things that I was raised on is, is, you know, do right by others, help other people out when you can. And that's something I really try to, to live by. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, and I kind of live by that same motto. I think that's uh, people that come from the small-town America really uh, try to convey that to a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with giving a helping hand to your neighbor. Absolutely. Or somebody down the road. I can remember the – you probably remember the ice storm of 94, don't you? When it got so bad. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I cut trees out of roads, man, run tractors. I was 14, and that was uh, that was a rough time, but no power. Uh, a really rough time. I was not time. 14. No, baby, you weren't. You were you were gleaming in your parents' eye. Which I was, was born. <laughs> anyway. You were still a on. gleam. <laughs> so on. I've got to ask this, Jake. Where did you come up with your sayings, man? That's where it's at. You know, that's a uh, that's a really, really funny story. <laughs> so that's where it's at. I think it was my second cooking video I ever posted. I just happened to say that, and um, somebody commented, that should be your new saying. That really fit well in there. So I tried it out a little more, and and uh, I just went with it. But as far as my other sayings, you know, I, I've got a list Going of Going in now. for that bite. Going in for that bite. Take a look at that cross section. You know, I gave a cross section on a pan of mac and cheese one time. I don't quite know how that works, but, <laughs> um, you know, I just, I say things in the video and people, you know, they really like it. So, thing is, making these videos, I do them for other people. If somebody can cook something I made and enjoy it, if somebody can watch it and it makes them happy, I'm going to keep doing it. That's what it's about. It's not about me. It's about other people. So, if they want to hear me say going in for that buyer. If they want a cross-section on a pan of mac and cheese, by gosh, we're going to do it. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that at all, and I'm the same way. I mix up words all the time in videos. I know you're not <laughs> like that. I'm, you know. No, not you. Yeah, I mix up words, say stuff wrong, but you know what? I'm having a good time. Absolutely. I'm not out here trying. I'm not a professionally trained chef. I'm just out here trying to cook what I love to cook. Absolutely. And I'm just like you. If somebody wants to think that recipe looks good and they want to try it out i love for them to try and love the feedback and like you said i love it when people take and put their own twist on my recipes and try different rub, rub combinations with it and different flavors different sauces because it opens your eyes to it gives me other ideas for other videos a lot of times 100 percent, and that's uh and that's the big thing that that you understand i understand in this in this big world of cooking everybody likes something a little different and that's one thing I'm big on. I always tell people, you do it how you like. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you did some, uh, some pork steaks the other day. You pulled them at around 143. I pulled mine at 150. That's personal preference. Yeah. But I posted yesterday, coincidentally, a, uh, a Wagyu beef chopped cheese. Boy, everybody wanted to say, I've, you, you ruined Wagyu beef with American cheese. Well, you do it how you like. That's right. That's the big thing is a recipe to me is a guideline. People get angry about cheese. Oh, they by do. The way. Absolutely. <laughs> but a recipe to me is a guideline. You know, you make it. Yeah. If you want to change this, just because I post it this way, change it. Make it yours. Make it how you're going to enjoy it. Because that's what I want. I want you to enjoy what you make. Well, you know what it was with the chopped cheese, right? That's kind of in the same family as Philly cheesesteaks. Oh yeah. And we all know how those Philly people can be when it comes to cheesesteaks. They're very confused up there. <laughs> oh, you know they they've all got a. They got one way to do it, and I guess my way wasn't that way. Well, yeah. evidently the two ways I've done it was not their way either, Jake, because I still – what's so confusing to me is I get one person from Philadelphia that says, you nailed it, 
And then John, the neighbor, just totally goes off because he don't think I nailed it. Oh, absolutely. Been there, done that. But one thing I nailed either way was I enjoyed the one I ate. I, you know what? <laughs> That's, That's a damn good way of putting it because me and everybody, I made four cheesesteaks the day I done it. And there was nothing left when everybody got absolutely. it. Absolutely. It was completely demolished. Cheesy, good steak. Absolutely. That's all that matters to me. It was, uh, you know, but I will say I think Philadelphia people are probably the most, how do I word this? I'm not going to say bullish online, but I'm going to say most confrontational <laughs> when it comes to a specific food. Now, oh. I'm waiting to test out the Chicago deep dish pizza oh, God. people. You know, it's coming. A, I'm going to get them. Up, don't be upset. That's actually been on my list for a while. I've been making one for for a good while, good old cast iron pan deep dish pizza. And I've kind of had – it's actually on my list of videos to make. It's on mine, too. I want to see if how much I can get the Chicago people riled up like I did the Philadelphia <laughs> people. Hey, you know, we may just have to see what happens. Uh, and then I'm going to attack New York. I'm going on New York next. I ain't figured out if I'm going for the pastrami. I don't think attack uh, is a good I, word, I, by I, the way. I don't know I'm what just I'm saying. going for New York yet. I'm going city to city by food next. You know, that's not a bad idea. It's good publicity. Good or bad, they still talking about you, right? Exactly. Somebody's talking about you, they still talking. Well, that brings me to something. How old are you, Jake? Well, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. You know, I get a, probably the most common answer is between 14 and 46. But what I always tell everybody is I'm old enough to know better and young enough to not care. You know what? You heard it here first. Jake, he told y'all. That's it. I will give you a little hint. I am somewhere between 14 and 46. Nothing wrong with that. You dropped a hint. They can guess in that. That's it. I mean, most of them are right. I, I am between the group. Old enough, no better, and young enough to not care. That's it. Nothing wrong with that. So what really made you go viral on social media, would you say? So I, I initially started my page, I guess about three and a half years ago, and I had built a small following. and I'd actually got off for almost two years and had several friends, buddies at work. You know, they said, you got to get back on there. You got to get back on there. And uh, I really didn't have plans on it. I bought the stuff to, to cook and make a couple of videos. It was the uh, support belly burn ins and the, uh, I think it was the pork shots. Anyway, after I posted two videos, I was back up at like 25,000 followers. I think I was at 15 when I got off the first time. I said, well, I guess I'm going to keep doing it. I truly believe, and this is not saying anything good about myself, that's, that's not who I am. I get a lot of comments, a lot of messages. Hey, man, you're not trying to sell a big dramatic show. You're not You're not trying to, you know, talk for 10 minutes to have a 30-second cooking segment. You're just getting on there, cooking, saying what you need to say, getting off. You keep it simple, and you make recipes that we can make at home. And that's one thing I, I joke around about is I may make a crockpot recipe today, and then post, you know, a Wagyu brisket tomorrow. I try to keep it really mixed up that way if, you know, Joe Smith wants to make this, you know, grilled pork chop recipe, he can. If his wife wants to make this crock pot recipe or she wants to make a, a recipe on the smoker, or there's something for everybody, something that anybody can make. That's how I like to be. Because not everybody either can or wants to go out and cook on a smoker for 16, 18, 20 hours. That's right. Some people want to throw something in a crock pot and have dinner tonight, and that's okay. So I try to keep it keep it different for everybody because I want everybody to feel like they can come and find something they can cook. And maybe they'll find out where it's at. That's right. Have you used any air fryer recipes yet or done any air frying? I've done a couple. Um, I guess the one I can remember the most, I did some air fryer fish tacos. But I've done a couple, and I have some more on the list. It's just uh, just getting around, getting down the list. Well, we exactly know how that list is. My list has turned into pages. If it's anything like yours, you get an idea and you go ahead and write it down. I and, do. and because you'll forget about it. And as time goes on, you'll find yourself 
Well, I really don't want to cook that one today. Let me scroll on down the list and get this mm-hmm. one. You just start. I just start marking them off when I do them. And uh, I can remember when I first got started, I asked Malcolm, I said, how did you find inspiration for new recipes every week? And he said, man, you ain't going to believe what I'm going to tell you. He says, it's easier than you think. It'll come to you what you want to cook. It absolutely does. And, you know, I was like, wow. I kind of struggled at first when I started going through the few food groups, you know what I mean, what barbecue guys like me, you know, cook chicken and pork and ribs. And, you know, and I love ribs, and I, I've kind of stuck with ribs a lot. And uh, ribs have been good to me, but I'm like you. I like doing other stuff too, and that's the one thing I hadn't done is done any kind of in-home indoor indoor anything, cooking really. and stuff and i need to do some more of that type stuff because i'm gonna be honest i didn't get looking like this eating barbecue every day <laughs> i got like this eating them cornbread and peas from my grandmother's house absolutely you know fried pork chops and meatloaf and, and if it's one thing i can go back tomorrow it'd be getting my grandmother back to cook me a home cooked meal i heard that lord rest her soul in heaven that's that's my that was my mentor if i had to pick one and that's that's the type of food I grew up on in our barbecue. I think I told you before at Memphis come from my dad, you know, on the fire department. And he was a EMR and an EMT at one time himself and the corner for 17 years. And he helped with fundraisers, whether it was Boston Butts and our chicken halves. And it was always doing something like that. And I just kind of flipped that into, well, I'm going to go cook this little local barbecue contest. And it kind of all barrel rode from there. It was kind of a wild story for sure. Gave you a good start, and that's, you know, everybody's got their inspiration. And like you said, getting into the indoor cooking stuff, it's a, as a barbecue guy, it's not something that that you think, hey, I've got a barbecue page, you know. Nobody wants to see that. Well, people do. And that's actually something that, you know, I have coming up. I've talked to some of my, my followers about this winter doing some some indoor cooking when it's too cold. It's down here in the south. It's not, there's usually not a whole lot of time it's too cold. but Or too hot. Yeah, but uh, you know, doing some indoor stuff, some some different types of chilies, some stews, some crockpot recipes, you know, stuff like that 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 kind of goes more. And uh, you know, you and I actually also talked about how we both want to do some some field to table stuff content this winter. And I think that's going to go over really well. Well, as soon as I get my farm finished, you're gonna come on out, ain't you? Oh yeah, I'll we're be gonna, there. We're gonna cook up some live fire. We're gonna do it right out there. I'm in. It's. Uh, I'm sure you seen my video posted the other day. They've got everything framed up. Metal's getting ready to go on. Electrical's happening right now. Yeah, it so, is. It's looking right already. I'm. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's done. Me too. Uh, I just hope we can get her decorated up right and all that. I'm gonna move a bunch of trophies and everything around and try to make it look good. Um. So let me ask you this: Did you expect your page to blow up like it has once you started back? I, I didn't. Like I said, honestly, I was intending on posting two more videos and, you know, telling my buddies, hey, you know, nothing's happening. You know, I'm just going to get off. Because when I first got on there, you know, it was it was cool. You know, uh, you know, guys from other fire departments, you know, send me a message, hey, you know, we cooked your recipes on shift. Or uh, I remember like a couple of the uh, air evac guys sent me a message on Facebook, hey, man, we love your recipes. And that was cool, but now it's went to, you know, I tell everybody, I, I did the campsite cooking in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I forgot marshmallows to have s'mores for everybody. I went to the Dollar General in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Couldn't even go to the Dollar General without some. Hey, you're Big Jake, ain't you? And that's awesome. You know, I'm truly blessed with a big following. I'm truly blessed with great followers. And I never mind talking to anybody. I'll talk to that wall right there. <laughs> you sound but, like uh, me. You know, I'm blessed, but... That's why I tell everybody, you know, can't go to the Dollar General in Hot Springs, Arkansas, you know, because it's grown that big, and, and it's truly awesome to see the people around the world, around the country, that uh, just truly enjoy it, and, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm glad they enjoy it. I tell everybody, as long as they enjoy it, I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing about it. I, me too. I try to not let any discouragement get in my way. When, when we first started and we uploaded our first YouTube video, my blood pressure kept getting up. You remember that? Uh, I Those mean, you can't read all warriors. the comments. And now I don't read a lot of the comments. I mean, I do, but I don't. You know, if it starts off negative, I just go on. I don't even finish reading it. It's not worth it. Absolutely. And that's that's something that I have. The negative comments, they don't bother me at all. But it's hard to go through all the comments individually 
and I, I ignore the negative ones. I try to respond to the positive ones. I do my best. I can't get to everyone as much as I wish I could. It's a it's a lot to look at in one day, especially when you're trying to work and get out more content and and everything else. But but yeah, like you said, you can't look at the negative comments because somebody's always going to have something to say, and that's that's just life. I had a good friend of mine, uh, Susie from Hey Girl Hey. She responds with, "Ha ha, okay," to everything that's negative. That's her basic. <laughs> One standard comment to everybody. And you know, nobody really balks back when she says it like that, which is pretty cool to me. I mean, haha, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, but she's a, a, you know, one of the stellar ladies of the sport, is what I like to say. She has come a long way herself uh, with everything, done a great job. Um, you know, I have to ask, what's next for Big Jack's barbecue? You know, uh, I just did a, I recently did a merchandise drop. So I've got that website up and going. So next on the list, we're looking at, at putting out some rubs and some sauces. And uh had a lot of requests for a cookbook. So that's something I'm working on. One thing I'm guilty of is I have never been one for measuring. I measure with the heart. I go along with it. Even if I'm, you know, my recipe is online, you see me say, yeah, we'll use a half cup of cheese, and I just grab a handful and throw it in there. And uh, that's something I'm guilty of. I've never been one for measuring, and uh, I don't think anyone from the South really. I was gonna say, measures. I feel like that's a Southern thing. That's just how. Unless it's baking. That's how my grandma taught me. Like, yeah, you just you just, just a do pinch it. and a handful <laughs> and a this and a that. Put it in there till it feels right, and just go along with it. <laughs> you know, talking about that, Jake, not getting off subject. Candace's grandmother had to teach her how to make chicken and dressing when we were dating. She wanted to pass on tradition, right? There's no. Chicken. Or dressing, just, just dressing. dressing. Just dressing. Uh, you know, for Thanksgiving and stuff, right? There's no recipe. And there's so. no recipe for it, and there's no measurements like what you're talking about. It's that same way. It's tasted till you get it how you want it with the sage Absolutely. and the black pepper and all that. It's the same way. So we basically went and made it. I made it with my grandmother, and I tried my best to write. To, to develop a recipe. Yeah, and you should see it. It's comical, really. We it, get out it, of there's every, still no measurements. Yeah, it's get, just like add the – it's like five eggs, and then you go down. It says two more eggs, and then yeah. it's just like it goes yeah. on. But every year it's different. No matter what I wrote, it's not the same. Well, and that's something – because I've been developing – putting my blends on paper. And uh, I've been making blends for for different things for a long time, and but it's been the same thing. It's always been a little different each time. I've just thrown it together last minute, cooked my chicken or cooked my my pulled pork or my ribs. Or so now that I'm going through it, I'm writing everything down. I'll taste it, and well, it's just missing just a little something. So we'll go and we'll adjust a little bit, and and uh, I think I've got it about there. But uh, that, that's that's my next step is the cookbook and, and the rubs and hopefully some sauces. I've got a few sauces I'd like to put out there also. And uh, I'm working on it, and I'm trying to do better about writing stuff down. I got me a little recipe book that when I try something, I'm like, man, that'd be great for the cookbook. I, I go try to write it down real quick. And uh, just trying to go that route and hopefully, hopefully see some good things from that and put out some more stuff people can enjoy. Yeah. So you said you done a merch drop. When are you going to work on releasing your rubs, you said? Well, I'm actually, right now, I'm I'm looking at different different ways to go about it, distributors, vendors. Trying to find your right co-packer and all yeah. that and how to launch and everything else. Trying to find who's going to, who will be mutually best to work with for me because everybody's different, every company's different. Yes, they are. And uh, not everybody has the same values. And that's exactly so, right. So I'm looking into into going about that process and uh, hopefully it's not going to be too terribly much longer but it's not going to be tomorrow or anything it's just uh it's in the works and i i do believe it's going to happen it's just going to take a little time because if i do something i want to do it right well that's the best way to do it because we have found if you don't do it right the first time we've had to go back and redo so many small steps in the chain once you really start growing um you know and a lot of people don't you you may not realize this city when you start scaling that recipe you tend to have to cut the salt back even though from what you started more and add other stuff in because as you scale 
just a mass of the salt, I guess, gets it more saltier. Um, that's really the only hard part about scaling a, a recipe. But once you figure your scale pattern out of what to take away and add more pepper or sugar or whatever, and those are really your other two main ingredients when you, you know, got to is pepper and sugars. Um, it's kind of easy. It's not that hard at all once you do it. And I tell anybody, once you get one down, second second to the 40th is easy. It don't matter. And that's uh, something I'm hoping to do is I'm looking at starting out with four initially. And, you know, two of them, it, you know, is a brisket rub, Texas-style brisket rub. And just a SPG, which are, you know, a lot of people have SPG on the market. They're all pretty basic. They each have little different things about them. Um, but I found starting out with a uh, just a general barbecue rub, and like you said, building from there, maybe making some some separate barbecue rubs with with different profiles. Yep, nothing wrong with that. So where can everybody find you at, Jake? So on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can find me at BBQ with Big Jake. Um, that's my handle on all of those. And uh, you know, I'm also on BBQ with Big Jake dot com. It's the email. You know, I try to stay pretty up to date on that. Sometimes I get a little behind, but but yeah, BBQ with Big Jake. It's my website, it's BBQ with Big Jake dot com and, and that's where I'm at. Well, nothing wrong with that. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on today and sharing your story and and thank you for everything you've done for us, you know, and all that. And uh, can't wait to do some cooking with you yourself. Absolutely. I thank you for having me, and I'm glad to call you a friend. Yes, Great sir. To be here. All right, now it's time for us to roll into our mailbag questions. Let's get going. All right, mailbag questions. <laughs> Sorry. You still haven't answered Shane's question. Sorry. It was on here. I know. I got to go back and make that top <laughs> 10 list down. Top 10 song list. Um, okay. The most recent questions. If you could only eat one barbecue item for the rest of your life, which would you pick? That's from Dustin McGinnis on Facebook. That's easy. Ribs. And you want to know why? You can peel them off the bone and chop them and still have a chopped pork sandwich. But you can also have them as ribs. You cut them down. There's so many things you could do with ribs. Like what? Well, I mean, you can take the meat and treat it just like pulled pork and do egg rolls with it. You could do a salad with it. But I think the rib meat's more versatile to me. I'd rather have the meat on the bone than I had the Boston butt. That's just me. Good answer. Who do you personally admire or respect as far as other barbecue YouTube creators? That is from... AAA Sports 9898 on YouTube. Well, I'm going to tell you, that would be a long list of people because, I mean, for one, you got to pay homage to Malcolm Reed. He's one of the pioneers of the YouTube community along with Barbecue Pit Boys. Uh, you got to give those two great. They were some of the first two to ever start, like I think only a month or so apart. Um, it's been years ago. Yeah, years ago. Um, but – you know, I can't say Matt Pittman's got a great YouTube channel, Sam the Cooking Guy, Cosmo, um, God, Barbecue Big Jake. I mean, you, you name it, and there's so many different affiliates to people that own businesses to, I mean, it's just unreal, the barbecue YouTube channels out there, and there's so many sure. unique ones. It's, it's insane. All right. Malcolm Reed is a diehard Blue Plate Mayonnaise fan. Matt Pittman is a Duke's Mayonnaise fanboy. <laughs> what is Heath Rowell's Mayonnaise of Choice? That's from Subshooting8414 on YouTube. Well, let me explain my mayonnaise debacle. I don't really have one. I love all mayonnaises, as you know. But I am a Blue Plate fan. I'm a Duke's fan. And I'm a Hellman's fan. But if I'm buying, I'm buying Blue Plate. I feel like Duke's sometimes thins out in the coleslaw where Blue Plate don't. It gets a little too watery. Um, when you make like a yeah, when a, you make a big something batch. with it. Yeah. Uh, but as far as taste goes, as long as it's not Miracle Whip, I'm fine. I'll eat Miracle Whip, but I want real mayo. And, I, you know, as far as best tasting mayo goes or not, I'm going to have to go with the trough mayo. 
That is a good. I mean, maze. I hate to say it, and a lot of people don't know what the truff mayo, like the truff uh, hot sauce. Yeah, but they it's make an uh, organic mayonnaise that is another level. It really is. All right, how did you know, or how did you know, or did you know that your rubs were about to become a top brand in barbecue? Would love to know how you could tell you were going in the right direction. South Carolina Barbecue Company on Twitter. Well, I'm going to be honest. I still don't know how I'm going in the right direction. I don't consider myself one of the top brands out there. You're going up against iconic brands like Sweet Baby Ray's. I mean, so we have a great brand, I feel like, but you're going up against icons in this industry. Um, And so to ask me, did I think I was going to be there? No. Do I think I'm there yet? No. It's a long journey, and – I'm just happy to be on the road. All right. Next question. Turkey time is almost here. Do you inject or brine your Thanksgiving turkey from Mike Kinglesmith on Facebook? I might well, say that wrong. Well, as you know, I love to inject and brine. I usually make up a double batch, inject as much as I can, and pour the brine over it for the remainder of the time. That's what I like doing. All right. What is the proper amount of tong clicks when you pick them up from Dan Wright on Facebook? Well, if you don't do at least two. Oh, tong I feel like it's clicks, more than that. I said at least two. Click, click. Yeah. But depending on how far the walk is from where I got the tongs at, if they were already on the patio or I'm going from inside to out, it could be a dozen times because you're going to click them no matter what. They're in your hand. Right. It's kind of like somebody putting a cold beer in my hand. It ain't going to sit there and get hot. You got to drink it. All right, last question. What's some advice for someone who wants to get into competition barbecue? How do you get started? From Garrett Will on Facebook. Run as far as you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the best way to get started these days is to cut the learning curve. Choose a cooker that you like running. And then find someone that teaches a class on that style of cooker. You've got guys out here that teach classes on pellet grills, guys that teach them on stick burners, on gravity fed, whatever. So you want to make sure you take a class and spend your money wisely to cut the learning curve. Some of the best out here, like Travis Clark still teaches classes. That's one I would highly recommend. He cooks on a stick burner. Um, You know, Bob and Mo have a great backyard style class. But as far as comp barbecue, I mean – you really just need to focus on taking a class around the cooker that you bought, and then you can adjust your recipes from there. But what you're, what you're really looking for is to learn what the meat is going to do on that style cooker, the tenderness level it needs to be, and that's something that can't be taught. That's only learned over time. All right. Well, that's all the questions that I have for this time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed shooting the cue. We'll see you all next week with another podcast. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Shooting the Cue podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to reach out to us on our social media channels or through our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. Leave us a review if you enjoyed the show. Until next time, keep shooting the cue.